I'm Mark Upton from Sports Relations and this presentation is addressing the topic of training technique in isolation in team sports and particularly at youth development type ages and it's been a uh, hot topic if you like recently on Twitter and the like but probably for a long period of time and is certainly a traditional way of uh, coaching. There's some research done that was a fairly simple study design but I think has some really important um, and interesting insights that are provided um, in the results of this study. So I just want to go through um, what they were and perhaps some of the implications for those. So in team sports, you might have heard the term perception, action, coupling. So throughout a game, when you're in possession of the ball or not in possession, constantly your actions are actually being driven by your perceptual skills and what you perceive in the environment. So in this case here in basketball, Nowitzki with the ball, he's probably perceived that defender's too close so he can't take the action of shooting, but perhaps the passing lane's opened up to Terry and that might be the best option, so the pass action in this case. But that's that action has all been determined by having to perceive what's happening in the environment. So constantly there's this coupling between perception and action as players participate in team sport games like basketball, football, Aussie rules, etc. And so the study looked at whether how um, when you train these components in isolation, i.e. just the action or motor skill compared to when you combine them together and what's the actual impact on effectiveness of the, of the skill and how it's executed and the range of variability um, in the motor skill that's produced. So they set up four different conditions with senior futsal players. Condition one, back and forward passing over five metres. Condition two, diagonal passing over about seven metres but predetermined the same as condition one. Condition three was different in that they start to introduce the perceptual component as well where the player could pass either back and forward or diagonally but he had the choice and he could pass to a player that didn't have the ball so he's first got to perceive all that and decide on his option. And condition four created an extra option where he could also pass laterally as well as back and forward diagonally. So one and two predetermined passes three and four, combining perception with action or perception determining action. And what they found, not surprisingly, passing accuracy in one and two predetermined 80%, but dropping down, as soon as you introduce the perceptual component, the passing accuracy decreases such to condition four, similar to what they found from match situations. And maybe even more interesting was the ball speed. So the, the, the speed of the ball as it was passed between two players in condition one, back and forward, very constant ball speed, suggesting a very narrow range of technique or um, kinematics of the actual movement or the mechanics was being produced. So, you know, the same, almost exactly the same type of uh, motor skill, if you like, whereas in condition four where perception is driving the action, we see a lot more variability in ball speed and the ball speed would reflect a different motor pattern or a different kinematics of that movement, how, how well you make contact with the ball, which is also the accuracy dropping suggested that was different. So in actual fact, introducing the perceptual component changes the technique if you like. And obviously in a match, we have perception and action coupling. And so a guy called Rick Finolio who, who looked into uh, a lot of this type of thing when doing some research into value of small-sided games and how they work in this area and developing skill and decision-making, he, he questions the value of learning technique in isolation and whether we're actually wasting our time because when we combine it back with the perceptual demands of the game, the techniques that are produced are actually a lot more variable and different from when we practice them in isolation. So whilst we think we're practicing the techniques that are used in a match, we're actually perhaps not, or perhaps only practicing a very narrow um, range of those techniques. And he also touched on the point there at the end about coaches perhaps underestimating what youth and, and even eight, nine, ten-year-old players are really capable of given an environment where they're allowed to make mistakes, it's not expected to be perfect, but how quickly their bodies and, and systems can adapt to being able to perform fairly complex uh, actions um, in difficult situations. And so just as examples of this typical drill that's like a condition one or two where we've just got action, let's have a look at it. Ball goes around, 
this pass here, take it back a bit. It's a bit like in the research study, it's a five metre pass to a stationary target. But as that player's approaching to receive the ball, this player here, he knows exactly the type of pass, where the, where the player he's passing to is, he's focused on just, and hits it pretty solidly. Okay, versus our second example here, where a player receives the ball, turns, at this point he has no idea. So in a match situation where it's perception drives action, or you've got the perception action coupling, he's, he receives it, he's not sure where he's gonna pass. So he turns, faces, and he's actually considering whether the forward pass is on to start with. So he was actually looking uh, forward to see if there was a channel to get through, but because that defender was past defending inside more, he actually decides that's not on. So let's look at that. He's looking forward, thinking, thinking. Well, it's almost going to go for it. Didn't. So instead, because that defender's playing inside, opens up the wider option. And again, in the end, that's what, a five metre pass to a stationary target. Yet the process, in terms of uh, cognitively, and the mechanics or the motor skill aspect of how that pass came about is vastly different from this situation. So, so the, does this provide any value to that situation? The research suggests that perhaps it doesn't, as well as what we saw from Rick. So the take home with all of that, players in team sports combine perception with action to make effective, to, uh, to perform effectively in matches. And that when actions and motor skills like a pass are predetermined, such as in some of those practice drills, cone to cone drills, they're likely to be executed very differently from perceptually driven actions we see in a game. And, and the key point is probably a very narrow range of technique is used. And there's no real evidence that you have to learn the motor skill first before introducing perceptual and decision-making demands. And in fact, it could just be wasting a lot of time. So clearly, the coupling of perception and action in practice is, is critical for skill development. Doesn't mean you always have to play small-sided games. There's other ways that you can ensure this coupling exists, but they don't always have to be in, in a small-sided game or a game-based situation. So hopefully that was a useful insight, not, probably nothing mind-blowing, but always useful to have some research and evidence um, to help guide the way in terms of designing effective practices for player development. My role with sports relations works or is involved heavily with this across team sports. So if you'd like more in, uh, information um, or to, for us to work more closely with you, whether that's to do some workshops with you as an individual coach, coaching groups, organisations, clubs, we can do workshops, presentations, designing pro training programs, providing feedback on your current uh, practice design and activities that you run in practice, and we can work more closely on an ongoing continued basis with individual coaches who really are looking to specialise in this area, particularly in youth development, I think. So if that's something you're interested in, please don't hesitate to get in contact with me via email or on Twitter. Again, thanks for listening. I'm Mark Upton from Sports Relations.